Thomas Philippin, The Great Reversal, How America Gave Up on Free Markets. Welcome to the summary of The Great Reversal, How America Gave Up on Free Markets by Thomas Philippin. Through this insightful book, we embark on a journey to explore the transformation of America's competitive market policies and the shift in market concentration. We will delve into the origins of the European Union and its strategies in handling competition and market policies. Throughout the summary, we investigate the effects of changing market practices in sectors like digital access, healthcare, air travel, and the financial and tech industries. The book reveals how a decline in antitrust enforcement and the rise of lobbying have contributed to a deterioration of competition in the United States compared to its European counterparts. U.S. Free Market Triumphs The U.S. government deregulated various industries between 1970 and 1990, setting an example of how free markets lead to maximum consumer gains. The deregulation led to an increase in competition, leading to benefits such as lower prices, increased production, higher employment, and investment, ultimately improving the standards of living. The reforms reflected bipartisan support and were successful in making the U.S. a hub of low-priced goods and services. The Evolution of EU Competition Regulations The European Union's EU, approach towards market concentration issues and competition regulations has undergone significant changes. This transformation can be attributed to the EU's origins and the pursuit of its central regulatory authority. In the early days, the EU was established based on America's strategy of deregulating markets and fighting concentration to encourage competitiveness. Over time, the EU established robust and independent institutions to ensure that all member countries had an equal say in regulatory decisions. The EU paved the way for low trade and investment barriers and introduced unique rules to promote a level playing field. EU regulators are known for being tougher than their US counterparts when assessing market dominance resulting from mergers. The EU's continued focus on competition regulations has been instrumental in promoting healthy competition and ensuring that no market player enjoys a monopoly. Concentration, the negative impact on the US economy. The United States' lack of focus on competition has led to a decline in many markets, resulting in higher prices and limited choices for consumers. The pattern of mergers, entry, and exit barriers, and greater markups due to market power has hurt U.S. consumers because of the lack of competition. The cost of digital access, medicines, and healthcare in America is higher than in other countries. The growing concentration in the airline industry resulted in less competition, higher prices, and patchy service levels. This rise in concentration has created market power arms race, which consistently benefits the executives while harming the consumers. Banking and Technology The financial sector should have reduced its percentage share of GDP due to technological advancement, but it didn't. Instead, technology enables faster trading connections and automated speculative trading. The EU has passed the General Data Protection Regulation, giving people ownership of their banking data, conveying stronger regulatory independence. After the 2010-2012 crisis, financial supervision moved to the EU level, which weakened the lobbying power of some EU banks over their governments. Misguided regulations create barriers to new entrants, preventing further reduction of the financial sector's percentage share of GDP. Tech Giants and Lobbying Large tech companies are increasingly lobbying governments due to concerns around data protection and antitrust regulations. The EU's General Data Protection Regulation has been particularly impactful, constraining the behavior of companies like Facebook and Google. Amazon's concentration and market power also pose potential issues for consumers. These companies have been known to engage in killer acquisitions, acquiring infant tech companies before they become competitors. Despite their dominant presence, the new tech behemoths are no more profitable or innovative than previous corporate superstars, and their economic footprint is less impressive. Dissecting the Profitability Trend in American Companies 
American businesses have experienced a consistent rise in profitability over the years, surging from 6% to 7% of profits to GDP to approximately 10%. However, the investment level of companies has not kept up with this trend, with only 10% of profits from 2002 to 2015 going towards investments. This could indicate monopoly behavior where companies produce goods below the optimum level and let demand drive prices up. Furthermore, studies have shown that sectors with higher concentration metrics lack investment in extra capacity. The book's summary also explores the contrast between the profit margins of American and European Union businesses, with U.S. companies experiencing a significant surge in profit margins after 2000, while EU margins remain relatively stable. This trend is not due to superstar firms capturing markets by offering new goods or services, but rather from increased mergers and fewer new entrants. The decline in U.S. Federal Trade Commission antitrust actions and the number of listed companies point towards a concentration trend in America's business landscape. The Dark Side of Lobbying Lobbying in the USA may be linked to the deterioration of the competition's basic fabric in many domestic markets. The amount of money involved is unlimited, and attempts to reform lobbying face constitutional references to the First Amendment. Expert knowledge is no guarantee of success when it comes to lobbying, what counts most is money, contacts, and access. The Power of Competition Competition is essential for a thriving free market economy. However, true competitive markets are fragile and require proactive authorities to maintain variety and diversity. Efficient and competitive markets are a common good that benefits everyone. Nevertheless, lobbying to spoil competition offers outsized rewards to a few, creating a concentration of losers. America has the potential to address its issues and regain its free markets. Having navigated the key points of Thomas Philippon's The Great Reversal, we can appreciate the stark differences in the American and European market policies. While Europe has maintained a strong stand against market concentration, adopting the level playing field, rules and embracing deregulation, the United States has gradually let its competitive edge erode. This stems from a rise in mergers, entry and exit barriers, increased lobbying efforts, and weaker regulatory enforcement. As a result, American markets have experienced a decline in fair competition, and consumers have faced negative consequences. By reflecting on America's current market situation, there is a chance to address the problems and restore the balance necessary for true competition and the common good.